Hey, what's up, guys? Dan Clark here from Berserk Films. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Video Copilot's Element 3D version 2.2. We're going to be taking a look at the basics of it. As you can see, we have a very basic scene here. We have the background, the Element 3D layer, and the camera. So, we're going to get started with this. And we don't have any lights um, because I, I just use the uh, lighting tab, add lighting in Element 3D. You can usually get pretty close to what you're looking for without. No, none of the hassle of uh, setting up 3D lights. But if I, if you're working on a bigger project or a more important project to you, that I would recommend you know setting up the lighting yourself and getting it as close as you can. But anyway, so we're gonna set up a new composition, six frames a second, 10 AP, 10 seconds. All right, we're going to drag in our background layer, and we're just gonna rename that BG. Make it a 3D layer and push it back in 3D space quite a lot. And then we're going to scale it up just to be bigger than our comp. And then click P and we're going to move it up a bit. And over to the side a little bit. So now we're going to go to layer, new, solid. And we're going to name this E3D. Doesn't matter which color it is. And then we're going to go to effect, video copilot, element. Now once you get into the element uh, tab here, the element effects, we're going to go to scene setup first of all. Right. And then we're going to go to our, for this scene I'm going to go to my jet strike tab and I'm going to grab a ground assault bomber plane. I'm going to scale that up a bit and I'm going to uncheck draft textures. If you have a good computer, you can uncheck that. It just basically loads the high quality textures inside the element GUI. Um, that looks good. We can even bring that up a bit. Uh, if this is if this is something touching the ground, like say you are putting out the landing gear and you're having it sit on the ground, you would make a new plane, and then you would go you would make it bigger, obviously. So maybe like 15 by 15. And then you would drop down, you go into the drop down menu and click on the texture for the plane, the plane model, like the floor, and click on the settings tab. And then scroll down a little bit to matte shadow and matte reflection. And now when you turn on shadows, you will have a shadow and also ambient occlusion um, definitely helps that process too. But we don't need this because we're having our plane fly today. So we're going to just delete that. And then once we have our plane in, we can adjust our environment. So we can go click on the environment that's already there. And I'm going to click on this city, this town, open. As you can see, it kind of looks weird in this, but don't worry. Uh, Element 3 is going to unwrap it for any of the uh, reflective materials, such as the windows here. And um, so as long as you're not getting too close, you won't have to worry about, you know, not having the exact um, environment that you want. But anyway, so let's click OK. And that's going to bring it into our scene. So now we have to make a camera. So we're going to go layer, new, camera. And then we're going to, yep, 50 millimeters, film size 36. Uh, if you want to, you can enable depth of field. We're not going to do that. And then click OK. And then you can click on the camera orbiting tool and zoom out, uh, you know, go around your plane, even scale up the background a bit. Looks like we might have to do that or bring it closer. So. Um, as we can see, we have the bomber plane in. Alright, so let's scale this up a bit. And position that a bit better. Of course, this is pretty low, this is pretty low, low quality image that we're using. Um, but it, it works. So, Alright, so we can zoom out, go over here. And click on that. And then bring it a bit forward. And then go back over into our scene. Fit that fit up to 100%. Just 
just uh to get back to this and then we can position it over a bit maybe up maybe down probably about right there and then we can bring it over a bit and that will give us the ability to scale it down um, like so so if we just move this over because we're also going to add camera shakes so you have to remember this has to be um, big enough on the edges so that we don't get black edges but then so this looks pretty terrible right now and that's because we haven't enabled uh, things like going down to render settings and enabling shadows and usually if you can do ray trace and then also going down to ambient occlusion this is the big one ambient occlusion and click enable AO and then I usually use ray trace and if we look at it before and after with it zoomed down around here so this is before ambient occlusion and uh, this is after so you can see it kind of gives shadows right here um, along edges of things if you take your uh, finger you can actually see this working in real life if you take your finger and put it up to the palm of your hand uh, even if there is a light behind you there is still a shadow above your finger so that's how that works that's how ambient occlusion works uh, it just makes it look more real and so yeah so we're gonna use it so this picture kind of looks at about that perspective I would say over the bomber um, so then what we're gonna do is also add lighting um, for this if you go to add lighting 360 it looks it matches pretty well uh, we can do color correction on this later and ma make it match even more but just for now we'll do the 360 light now we're going to animate our camera and animate our plane so if we go to camera and then we press R um, for orientation you click alt and then click on the stopwatch and for this I did wiggle two comma one and then close bracket and click enter and we'll get some camera shake um, if I just render this out we'll get some kind of camera shake so it looks more handheld instead of um, it, it makes it it just makes it look more interesting than if this was just say just looking down on the plane just spinning its motors makes it look a bit more interesting as you can see from just that one second of uh, video so <clears throat> then what we're going to do is click on E3D our E3D layer and go down to particle look and then aircraft rig we can actually spin the turbines so we can actually spin the propellers so if we move this they spin um, so what I'm gonna do is for the beginning I'm gonna set a keyframe <clears throat> and we'll have that at zero and then I'll move to the end and I'll set this to something like 136 and as you can see the propellers are spinning now later I'm gonna add motion blur to the comp and that's gonna pretty much slow everything down when we do that but that's what you do for rendering is you'll add motion blur to the comp by pressing that button <clears throat> um, you can also adjust some of these so say the elevators which are these little flaps back here uh, rudder right back here camera because there's a camera right there uh, if you want to adjust that make that like spin around if you're getting like a close-up on it or something <clears throat> Aileron, rudders, elevators, flaps, landing gear. You can animate out the landing gear, as you can see. But we're not going to be doing that today. Um, and so, yeah, that's pretty much all there is to that. 
And then once we render preview this out with motion blur. We'll have a good amount of camera shake. But this isn't. This isn't the last piece of the puzzle. Um, we're going to add one more thing with our background layer. So we're going to click on the keyframe button. And then we're going to go to the end. And we're going to make it look like it's going past just a little bit. We don't need to make it look, you know, like it's going past a lot. So as you can see, just kind of goes past as the plane's flying. We could even do a little bit less than that, like maybe that much. Not a lot. So there's that. And then once we do that, enable motion blur for the comp, and uh, you're ready. Usually I uh, trim out the first half second and the last half second, and then we can trim to comp, trim comp to work area. And uh, so that's pretty much the basics of using Element 3D in After Effects. Uh, if you like this video, you know what to do. Click that like button. If you dislike this video, dislike this video, and then you know. Leave me some suggestions for the next one in the comments below. But thank you guys for watching so much. And I'll see you guys in the next video.